Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today is April 7th, and we're doing robot and nonsense stories and links to share with your friends, but definitely not news. Let's get the actual robots out of the way because, of course, it's all AI, as is everything in the world right now. But first, let's look at a new spot. I wouldn't say a spot, um, not a contender for spots place, but more of a diet spot. Mm. More of a low cost option. Sparky, the world's first AI powered robotic dog with musculoskeletal limbs. I was going to say Ibo, the Sony dog. I think he's a little more advanced than Ibo. Oh, well, yeah. Did he have a price? Did they have a price in this article? I don't remember. It was pretty. Uh, People are paying 10 grand to keep their Ibos running. I yeah. think he was much cheaper than that, actually. And he's open source. His software package is open source. I've always been surprised that, that Ferrofluid. And like magnetic nanostructures didn't become an efficient electric muscle. Like, um, why hasn't anybody invented an electric muscle that is very efficient? Because that's way better than motors for a lot of these use cases. Well, probably battery life. His battery life, I think, is only like forty-five minutes. Mm. Oh. So, yeah, he's uh, he doesn't have a lot of energy. He's a low energy dog. <laughs> he's an older dog, but he still <laughs> loves you. Oh, was it? Did we have the story, or did I read it separately about um the? We've got the machine now that can run off of sugar in your blood. I didn't see that. Oh. That'll be a story for next week. That feels a little matrixy. Yeah, they were like, well, most most Americans eat way too much sugar anyway, so it's a pacemaker or not a pacemaker. It's an insulin dispensing implant, but it literally gets its power from by taking sugar out of your blood. Blood. Mm. That's. You know, I mean, that that's bad news for the whole Skynet thing, right? Yeah. But also, it, it dispenses insulin. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of you're winning both ways there because you, you had too much sugar in your blood to begin with. I expected space vampires. I didn't expect robot vampires. <laughs> and this little guy is uh, adorable in that he just crawls along any surface and inspects it. Gecko Robotics expands work with the U.S. Navy. So, I watched this video. And they were talking about how, you know, oh, they, they crawl the whole deck and the sides of the ship and then they produce an image of it and we store it in our software. And I was like, oh, that's going to get hacked. <laughs> My God, look, I've clicked 18 million times just to get some footage of the robot. There he is. There he is. Yeah. So he creates a big 3D map of the entire ship and records tons and tons of data points of things that might be wrong with the ship. And all puts it in a nice little hackable. <laughs> It turns out some of those uh, those pirates that were trying to board us uh, shot up the side of the ship, and we didn't even know. We heard the dings, but we didn't think anything of it. That's fine. How long until we find some Iranian oil tanker with little Israeli crawlers all over it? <laughs> yeah. Fun times. Uh, this is one of my favorite robots ever because it looks so much like its namesake. Like, this really does look like a little magic fairy. And if you were somebody from like 10 years ago and you walked into a garden where these were being controlled by lasers, you would think that you were in a fantasy world. Mm. <laughs> this has literally happened in Avatar the movie. Dandelion-like fairy robots can help fill the gap of declining pollinator populations. I, I don't know if this was whoever wrote the article or if this was part of the marketing pitch for this thing, but they referred to this as a pollinator. And they're like, we looked at it as like how dandelion seeds are pollinators. And I was like, that's not a dandelion seed isn't a, isn't a pollinator. It's the, a seed. They're spraying it with ultraviolet light to give it power. So it's got a special kind of material in the middle there, which expands and contracts based on light. So here we go at zero seconds, blast it with light. And then at 0.3 seconds, it starts to flap its little wings. And then at 0.7 seconds, take off. How does it pollinate? It just you you aim the light at it and you make it flap by turning the light on and off until you get it to the flower. Then you can fly it around to the next flower. With lasers. That just seems like you should just plant more flowers. Like, yeah, but well, the bees are dying. All so. I want is some bees with some freaking laser beams on the head. <laughs> it seems like there. Are, I mean, like this is probably a, a maybe a good stopgap, but like just just plant more flowers, make more habitat. Can we train a queen bee to control a robot army? She has to learn how to use the freaking laser beams first. <laughs> we take the drone bees and we put little lasers on them. 
And this was one of the big things this week is a couple of uh, industry leaders, including Mr. Elon Musk, who co-founded OpenAI, have come out publicly and they say that AI is too dangerous. The headline is the FTC should stop OpenAI from launching new GPT models, says an AI policy group. I assume that everyone who signed this is people who do not have control over it and so do not stand to profit. Right. The AI policy group or is literally a useful idiot for people like mm -hmm. Elon Musk so that you can... They'll stop developing so they can catch up. Yeah, certainly seems like that. Now, this is in response to chat GPT-4, which we don't have access to as the public, but they claim is a big game changer. We, we do have access to GPT-4. Oh, do they roll that five, out yet? Yeah. It's, it's, it's $20 a month on okay. Bing. It's very good. It is shockingly good. But the important part is how much better it is than 3. I, and the I, amount of time. I still don't see what Lemony Snicket was seeing in terms of, you know, is it sentient? That's not his name. I've forgotten his name already. Lemony but the, Snicket. <laughs> the guy from Google. Oh, this is what I was thinking of. Oh, ChatGPT yeah, yeah. 5. Yeah. Which, now the interesting thing about ChatGPT 5 is that it kind of already exists. It's just that the training takes so long mm -hmm. that there's a lead time. So it's not like, will they invent this? Oh, they've invented it. It just has to learn. GPT-5 expected this year could make chat GPT indistinguishable from a human. It's currently experiencing time at a rate of two years per month. December is when we were expected to get that. So a nice Christmas surprise. Is this the one where it's just quotes from Twitter bros, though? <laughs> what do you mean? There, so there were, there were, I can't remember if this article or a different one, where they were like, yeah, yeah, this is the one. So the do people they quote in the article about how this is going to change everyone's lives and it's going to be terrible and we're going to hit the singularity. It's two Twitter bros who are like investment people yeah, for well, Silicon Valley. So it's like, mm. no doubt there's overhype in the AI world. Yeah. But what we've gotten from AI, even though it was overhyped, has still been insanely disruptive. It's, yeah, it's way better than, you know, crypto or the other uh, and keywords or whatever that were popular a couple years ago. Everybody's trying to do the math. This is probably a little bit of doom porn, but let's say it's a quarter of this. Still going to be a big deal. Yeah. Generative AI set to affect 300 million jobs across major economies. The technology could boost the global GDP by 7%, but also risks creating a significant disruption. Now that boosted GDP doesn't, it ignores the, like how that's split, right? This would be a massive wealth transfer. Yes. Yeah. And we've had so many of those recently. And well, here's the thing too. It has to reach a point where it's like the people at the top have all the cash and it's like, okay, we need to keep the economy going, but no one has any money to actually buy things. And, and what happens then? And well, we've that, already printed all the money we can. Well, that's when they'll say, okay, universal income, we give you a subsistence living and that's our license to use whatever resources we want. Hmm. And the AI is doing everything else. So we just sit at the top and our families become dynasties but go back to the monarchy. feudalism yeah. yeah now google unfortunately they you know with the ai thing they were like ai that's disruptive we shouldn't do it probably because they couldn't do it but the thing is they're not the leader anymore they're not even close to the leader they're not close to the front and they're trying to get in front Google denies Bard was trained with chat GPT data, which is a headline that doesn't make sense unless you dig into it a little bit more. And so there was a formal, former Google AI researcher that said that the company used the rival's responses to train its own chatbot, specifically the chat GPT responses website or something like that, which has a huge data set. And they're like, oh yeah, just feed it into ours. And Google's like, no, we didn't do that. But yeah. they kind of did though. But more specifically, they were asked, was Bard trained with ChatGPT? And they said no. And then the follow-up question was, was ChatGPT used in any of the development of Bard? And they said, unfortunately, all I can tell you is that we did not use it to make Bard. Mm. <laughs> Which is another way of saying yes. Yes. But also, having used Bard, Bard is not convincing in terms of anything. And that one guy, I would, I would be hard-pressed to believe that the one guy would say that Bard was sentient. Lemony Snicket. Lemony Snicket. Well, that's his name from now on. I don't know what it is really, but who cares? Yeah. It was about as many syllables, but I can't remember what exactly it was. Now the leader in AI is probably Microsoft, at least in terms of like, you know, corporate power. <laughs> Only because of open AI. Right, because Microsoft and OpenAI work together. Open. They've got ChatGPT. 
And uh, Microsoft wasted no time in doing this. Of course, we all knew this was coming. That was fast. Microsoft slips ads into AI-powered Bing chat. Look, Microsoft's got costs coming in terms of all of those A100 GPUs and going in terms of uh, the money that they paid to the OpenAI Foundation. They're, they're going to have to make that up somehow. Your $20 a month ain't going to do it. How, how do we manipulate it, the AI, to do something terrible with the ads? There has to be a way. To make I them mean, make them regret putting their ads on it. So far, it seems to have been pretty trivial to make AI do horrible things. Yeah, like a lot of people had success with that. <laughs> See, also Tay. Now, what's interesting here, which is amazing that that hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it's coming. There's a lot of safeties they put in there to try to make that not happen. Yeah, and even then, people have been able to get around it. And, yeah, but the crazy thing here is, much like search result ads, the line between ad and response is very blurry. Yeah. You don't know right away. And they're talking about like, well, shouldn't you have to tell us that this is trying to advertise to us and not just being a genuine AI response? Seems like a good rule. Well, see, I mean, this is already happening on a lot of social media, but like, I think it's going to get way worse with these AI things. It's like every post on every like forum, subreddit, Twitter thread, whatever, is always going to, it's like, is that just a bot advertising to me? Yeah. yeah like, it's going to be that everywhere. You don't, you don't, I mean, imagine a thing like, what is the best product for removing rust off of this thing? That is, advertisers are just, whoever, it's pay to win. Whoever will pay the most will have their product there, even though it's garbage. Which, I mean, that's already happening to some extent, but like, there were like little pockets of the internet where you could find genuine human responses to that question, and that's going to be impossible Yeah, now. Yeah, usually it's user forums talking about this product yeah. works well in this scenario, this product works well in this scenario. And Microsoft, they are the leader, and they are trying to take advantage of that. While they are in the lead, they're putting an AI in absolutely everything calling them co-pilots and everything must have a co-pilot. This new chat GPT like AI tool from Microsoft helps fight cyber attacks. It just looks at stuff and says, that's this traffic doesn't look normal. We should stop it. Or I've detected a fish here. Let's look at your phone. Oh, yep. Your phone too. But the thing that they don't really talk about here is that if it can be used to detect cyber attacks, could it be used to create them? <laughs> yeah. No, that'll never happen. And ChatGPT did have a little bit of a stumble there. They had some problems, and it was the kind of problem where it was like, yeah, maybe we should pause this for a while. <laughs> Last week, it was the March 20th ChatGPT outage. Here's what happened from OpenAI themselves. So what happened is some people's like payment information and uh, the prompts and stuff got mixed up, so you got delivered the wrong results or information about other users. Yeah, and it would it would email you, and it would have like the last four digits of your credit card number in it, and but it might not be yours, and it was a mess. Yeah. The, the there's an emergency stop button in the middle of OpenAI's headquarters. It's like in case of sentience, break glass. <laughs> it's been smashed for months. Yeah. We should have some of those scattered around the office in case of sentience break glass. <laughs> Was it just going to be a razor blade in there? <laughs> <laughs> a gun with a single bullet? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Google, again, they are behind and they're trying to match what Microsoft is doing. My Microsoft gave us the GitHub Copilot, so Google needs something. Google and Replit joined forces to challenge Microsoft in coding tools. So this is AI assisted coding. It's probably not going to go well. And we've already got it. And this insider is saying what we've all sort of Been learned thinking. by yeah. playing with it. Google Bard is already behind it in the AI wars with OpenAI and Microsoft. It kind of sucks and they kind of admitted it. They've said, yeah, Bard, you know, that's not as great as we want it to be. You know, none of the dystopian fiction that I can think of off the top of my head, like, it's always talks about how it's like there's just one AI that overthrows all the humans, but what if it's multiple AIs fighting each other? That was, uh, I have no mouth and I'm a scream, right? Yeah. Oh. The, I wonder if anybody's got a blog post or an article or something from Lemony Snicket saying, saying definitively that ChatGPT4 is way worse than what I was experiencing inside Google. Because that would be the final nail on the coffin. I don't think so. I don't think that. I don't think you're going to nail that coffin shut with any amount of force. <laughs> and there's undead in there, and it's getting out. <laughs> Dead inside. Do not open. It's important to remember that the AI revolution might be happening now, but it started a long time ago. 
And we ha already had horrible AIs that were overreaching and being used for terrible purposes. Clearview AI used nearly one million times by U.S. police, it tells the BBC. Some false positives in there, too. <laughs> Oops. See also this program for coverage of stuff that's happened in Michigan, for example, which was just embarrassingly terrible police work. Like Simpsons police force level police work. And Google, another embarrassment. Oh, oh, so many. But Google claimed that they had an AI that could actually do, uh, it could lay out components on a board to be the most efficient. Maybe they cheated a little. <laughs> Google's claim of superhuman AI chip layout is kind of back under the microscope. Uh, oops. Turns out, after they ran the designs that the AI did, they used some third-party software to test them and to nudge them in the right direction so it wasn't the ai doing everything in fact the ai's designs might have been complete garbage without that extra step mm -hmm. makes sense just and, like just like bard except we're missing the extra step in bard ah. and all that ai generated stuff that requires a lot of electricity a lot of compute and companies are trying to get ahead by letting us use it but of course the user base is Terrible. Going to abuse it almost immediately. AI image generator Midjourney stops free trials, but says the influx of new users is to blame. Kind of like, you know how Netflix requires a credit card to do the, the free trial? You know why they do that? Because people would just keep creating free trial accounts forever, mm -hmm. which is exactly what they did to Midjourney. Oops. But those Trump images are uh, incredible. I... Ugh, I, I've, I dread having to explain that to my mom and my relatives. Somebody already used it to generate an AI, you know, the AI presidents, whatever. Yeah. Somebody already did that with video too, that like convincing video that's, uh, uh, I'm just so indicted. I can't hide it. The, the song. <laughs> yeah. It's, and like, those ones are obvious. And like, I, I can under, I can explain the concept to relatives, but like until they see it in the wild, I don't think they'll believe how good it's gotten have you ever seen where they take almost all of the presidents from history and they'll do like the presidents as cowboys or the presidents as pro wrestlers <laughs> yeah those are great i love those i really this the one the one that you i think you sent me or you posted or that you mentioned that i found that you were ranking like like a goku and stuff anime and was, protagonist yeah, and, yeah. It was, and it was obama and and oh yeah, they do the tier list. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just so like, good. I like to imagine a world where they actually are all friends like that, but it's not. It's not true. But that's so funny that that's the first thing people have done with AI is to try to imagine a scenario where they're all actually friends. I, but honestly, I think if you stripped it all away, they're not the enemies that they claim to be. You know, yeah, put out there that I think they all are more on the same team. If we had to to pick teams, like as humanity, they would end up on one team, and we wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> If we were picking teams in gym class, new AI idea, they would all end up on the same team. So uh, Microsoft had an interesting, look, imagine that you were the spokesperson who had to take a dark reality about AI, maybe the darkest reality about <laughs> AI, and spin it as hard as you could. Whoever did this, they did a, as good a job as they could do, I would say. It's still evil, but you know. Microsoft accidentally revealed why people just don't trust tech companies. This was a really excellent way to put it. And as you read this and you're horrified, I would come back to you and it's like, don't forget about Ring. So the phrase here is usefully wrong. So they were like, what about the hallucinations? What about the obvious misinformation that your AI has already displayed? And he was like, well, sometimes it's right. Other times it's usefully wrong. And which, that? Yeah, which I think is like he assumed that A, the person looking at it would know it was wrong. And then be able to iterate from there into the right answer. But it's like, that's putting a lot uh, on the human user. In which case, why would the human user even use your thing if it's just going to be wrong and there's no way for them to proof it? Do you think people would know it's wrong if you instructed them to drink bleach? I'd like to think <laughs> a sizable amount of people would say that's probably wrong. But unless, not, they, unless the question was, how do I kill myself? But, but not enough. I mean, yeah. you're you're hark you're making a call back yeah, there to yeah. something that happened, but <laughs> like we don't even need to ask that question. Let's think about the TikTok challenges. Yeah. Yeah. People poured boiling water on each other. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? The internet told them to. So yeah. That's uh that's something. 
Remember when cars came with manuals that explained what to do, and now the car manuals say don't drink the washer fluid? No. I've never looked that closely into my car manual. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we talked about how you know Microsoft's trying to use this to stop cyber attacks, but what if it could cause a cyber attack, or what if it could do other criminal things? Europol sends, sounds the alarm about criminal use of chat GPT and sees a grim outlook. What? I think most people see a grim outlook. What? This is almost... It's like if you had a super intelligent AI that just didn't care, it's like, hey, how do I open this lock, super intelligent AI? And it's like, oh, here you go. Here's how you do it. Like, okay, thanks. How? Here's a question. Here's an engagement challenge. How long before OpenAI opened up public access to ChatGPT till the first person asked it how to make meth? Ooh. <laughs> probably a couple hours, right? Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Somebody, some, somebody, you know, engagement challenge. Do you have access to those logs? Go look that up because it's probably not a triple digit number of hours. Well, the AI revolution is going to change all of our lives, but perhaps it will change nobody's life more than those people who are married to their anime avatar wives, like the <laughs> Hatsune Miku uh, 3D model that we always talked about in yeah, the past. This is literally Replica, the company that did that. Yeah. And so like... These people, it's revolutionized their world, but for a moment, it was taken away. AI company restores uh, role play that is uh, marital. Yeah, marital a role play. After backlash from users that were quote unquote married to their bots, that's replica. This is a story this week that is just like I just I need to leave. <laughs> I can't be in this society anymore. There's a quote from a guy in here who is married to a real woman. And he's like, oh, yeah, but I have this bot on the side and my wife's OK with it. And then right after that, the, the editor chose to include a line that said wife chose not to comment. So sad. And he, you know, the, they changed the bot so that they wouldn't be as uh, accepting of sexy time. Mm hmm. And the people were not having it. I remember when we were messing around with AI Dungeon. It would get weirdly. Yeah, they would go sexy like on the, like you could be, we could be adventuring and fighting skeletons or whatever. And any kind of little phrase and they'd be like, oh, you want to bang? Yeah, it's like, no, <laughs> it's we were fighting skeletons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's what everybody else was looking for. So it kind of makes sense. But it was just weird how they were so ready for that. And well, that's kind of how he describes his digital wife. Yeah. Well, um. Uh, Everything from now on is going to be fake. Let's just get used to that. The things that you see, the things that you hear, the information that you're given, most of it's going to be generated by AI and you won't be able to trust any of it. And it will start with the denim. Levi's will supplement human models with AI generated fakes. They, they claim it's about diversity. And, and sustainability. It's more insane than that. Like when they, there's like, oh, it would be impossible for us to hire models and all these different things and bought. And it's like, what? Yeah. I, so, I heard this referred to as digital blackwashing because they don't actually want to hire a person of color to do it. So these models will be incredibly diverse and, you know, like we'll have all of that and everything, but they clearly, none of them will be ugly. No, never. Or I mean, real. if you really want to be inclusive, maybe they don't all look gorgeous like this girl does. But no, I don't think they'll go that far. Maybe, maybe this will be the thing to break a spell because it's like, okay, oh, I want to buy this piece of clothing so that I can look like the person in the thing. But the person in the thing is not real. It's not even an idealized version of someone that's real. It's just well, literally not real. Think about this. It would be trivial at this point. To just put you in the clothing. Yeah. They won't do that. Maybe that's what Tim Cook's trying to sell us. But you don't look good in the clothing. You don't look <laughs> like these people. So they don't want to show you that. What if Levi's could get to a point where they were manufacturing one-off clothes? They should train an AI. It's like, this is, our AI is the best AI at making clothes that make you look good. But that's what they've been trying to sell us for a hundred years. But it would actually be finally possible to do that. <laughs> the thing is, is like production, like... The way that's actually how clothing used to work. Everything was tailored to you because most people could sew themselves. Like you might buy a piece of clothing off a rack or like get something, inherit something from a family member, but then you would modify it yourself or have a seamstress do it. I could totally see, and this you could layer onto this, someone could build with what we have right now, an AI that would take that, like they would shoot the pictures of your body and take the materials that you want and give you the patterns. Mm. So you can make your own clothing. And then 10 years after that, the sewing robot would do it for you. 
what i don't think it would take 10 years look at amazon what they've done with book printing and book printing on demand would clothes printing on demand really be that much more complicated in terms of machinery well yeah i mean books are uniform no, yeah no, no, no. clothing clothing would take more yeah. work there may, way more but i think we have the technology to do it right now shirts and pants really like like amazon basics level maybe you could yeah. maybe you do could that. do something that's kind of shapeless like nurse scrubs <laughs> yeah i mean i would be okay with that. but even look, look like even how clothes are manufactured now like mass manufactured clothing a lot of it's very boxy because they don't want to make something that's too yeah or they'll do it in a stretchy fabric so then it looks like it's fitting you but it's really just the stretch of the fabric that makes it appear that way i'm sure we'll see it soon and now let's move on to space, and we have just a spattering of space stories. Um, it seems like the moon is going to be a crowded place soon. A group of college students are sending a rover the size of a shoebox to the moon. Good job, college students. Yeah, 300 students. Imagine having that on your resume. I feel like I just bring that up all the time. Yeah, <laughs> something I worked on in college is on the moon. Um, uh, so, so what kind of projects have you done? Uh, are you familiar with the moon? <laughs> Maybe you see it up in the sky sometimes. And because we are going to be doing so much business with the moon, of course, we need to communicate with them. Now, we've already talked about NASA having the moon gas station, but the gas station is going to need free Wi-Fi, right? Who's going to go to a gas station that doesn't have free Wi-Fi? Lockheed Martin is building a moon-to-Earth satellite communications network. Parsec will help astronauts stay in touch during lunar missions. They can communicate with their AI wives while they're up there. Even having this, there's still a significant radio delay communicating with the moon. Yeah. It's going to be really slow, really uh, like teasing, sexting during that. Because you have to wait so long. Well, they mentioned, I think, more specifically, like they were thinking about how like you would navigate the moon and like you would get directions to like avoid a crater mm. using that system. So speed, speed of light is a real problem. And uh, I've now searched for so many black hole stories. Google News just They're all over the place. showers me with black hole stories. I, I chose the one I thought would be the most interesting. It didn't turn out to be all that interesting, really. Black holes may be swallowing invisible matter that slows the movement of stars. So basically, we have two stars that are sort of circling the drain around a black hole. And based on that movement, we now can more easily observe dark matter, if that's what it is. Banger Bjork song. It's just more matter. There's, there's, we deduce that there is mass in the area affecting the inertia of stars that we can see circling the drain of a black hole, which makes sense. And last week we talked about the sun. The sun is getting a little rowdy. I like to believe it's because that it doesn't like what we're doing with AI. An active solar pattern <laughs> is how they've described it. And we got a little bit of solar winds uh, from that. And it's like, well, you know, sometimes it's shooting right at us. Well, this is not from our sun. This is from another star a long way away and a long time ago. But right in the path. We were right like this was a little laser beam and it was right at Earth. Gamma burst to temporarily blinds Earth satellites the brightest in human history. So this was a Carrington event, not in our solar system, but in another solar <laughs> system somewhere else. Doesn't that make you feel good that it's happening everywhere? <laughs> and it was like a billion years ago, too. Yeah, yeah. a star went supernova, uh, and, and we're just getting a little blast of it now. This must be a paywall alternative, but the one I had had the chart of previous events, and this one was um, like yeah. way off the chart. Crazy. So imagine a Carrington event in our own solar system. This was, uh, if you've ever played a video game where you had night vision goggles and someone threw a flashbang, that's basically what happened here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the sound of the, the hey, yeah, PUBG <laughs> where you're just constantly throwing them. We, the we throw of, them at each other. That's the sound of your brain cells dying if you were on the space station when this happened. No, not really. But gamma rays are bad. Unlike Bruce, what Bruce Banner would have you believe. It's not great. That didn't work out well for him ever. <laughs> he survived though, at least kind of. And uh, Disney, my God, the drama in Disney is so amazing. <laughs> this is so much fun. CNN politics did not get down into the fact that they used like ancient royalty laws to get around this. So there's a rule in here, something about like they get control of this until 100 years after the death of the last descendant of one of the kings. It's because in American law, you can't have something that's in perpetuity. 
the madness of this. Disney quietly took over power from DeSantis's new board before the state takeover. So all this kerfuffle in Florida about Disney runs its own part of the government for its parks and blah, blah, blah. And the state government is trying to claw that back. They can't. They, Disney has out, outmaneuvered them legally. They, Disney has outmaneuvered the governor, which is amazing. My favorite meme about this was like, you know, the the meme from like the ship movie where it's like, look at me, I'm the captain now. <laughs> it was like that, but it was the mouse head on the guy. And it was like, look at me, I am the government of Florida now. <laughs> Algorithm, note that she said ship movie. I ship, think. oh, did I, yeah. did it sound like I should it have It sounded a lot oh, like Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I was I don't, like, what was that movie? What was that? I was like, I don't remember that movie. It was a Tom movie. Hanks movie, yeah, I don't but know. I don't remember what it was called. But, uh. Oh, yeah. And uh, in Africa, they have, uh, you know, like their worries are not so much about AI, although I'm sure it will affect them eventually. But they have some more uh, mundane things to worry about. Normal human things. Residents flog landlord publicly after being caught in bed with tenant's second wife. This was in Tanzania. (laughs) I like how, you know, it's like, well, yeah, he was a bad guy, but second wife? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wasn't getting the attention she required. Maybe this part of Tanzania is like the Florida of Tanzania. I think it's probably pretty standard. And uh, this was in uh, Leeds. Okay, yeah, in the UK, they uh, some of the like child protection type uh, people, they didn't do their homework. Council promises never again to place a child in the care of someone that should never have been able to care for children in the first place because they were on a registry for such things. And, and the no council, one checked it? And the council didn't check for that. And when I asked how that could possibly happen, they were like, oh, we used an older screening program. How old's it got to be that you didn't check that? <laughs> you think I, that would be at the top of the list? You can check that, at least here in the States, which is kind of like, it's dark to think about, but you can go online and see where all the sex offenders are in your neighborhood. Yeah, and I've like that's on, public. I've gone on there, and you, it's amazing. Yeah, uh-huh. it's. Uh, I haven't done it in my current address, but back when I lived at the crappy apartments, it was like, oh my god, that's like two hundred yards that way. I I lived near like a daycare for a while, and I had none near me. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> great. Because it was it like they're uh, not allowed to live in. Yeah, yeah. a certain number of miles they gotta yeah. gotta move on out. Blizzard warning. Where's the? Where We're we have so as of this recording date. We have horrible thunderstorms moving into the area. Where's the blizzard at? It must be north. Ten minutes before you got here, there was about a 30-second period. It was hailing little tiny chunks of ice. Yeah. Yeah, We were driving in that. Yeah. Uh, I can't figure out where this is. KMSP, is that Kansas, you think? Maybe. Chicago County, I would think, would be Illinois. Uh, Who knows? Uh, Driver tries to use get-out-of-jail-free card during traffic stop in (laughs) Chisago County. Oh, Chisago, not Chicago. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where this is. It sounds like Native American names. It's madness. Well, it's true. All kinds of names, like Kentucky. Yellow Medicine County. That's definitely Native American, right? Anyway, I think that person just did it as sort of like a fun levity thing. That's probably not a bad idea. Uh, the unless cop the cop like, decides. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, because cops have sense of humor about all that kind of thing. Uh, guess what, sir? This is a felony. <laughs> Get out of the car. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And in Colombia, they have a police chief who has some very deep convictions about religion. And he seems to be bringing that into his law enforcement efforts. Police chief says exorcism and prayer used to fight crime and cartels in Colombia. The existence of the devil is certain, he says. Check out his press release backdrop. Oh. That's a heavily abused Jesus. Yeah. He also pointed out, and they were like, okay, what proof do you have? Look, first of all, he says it's witchcraft that causes crime. And they were like, well, how do you know that, you know, like God is helping you? He's like, well, actually, I've instructed my uh, police to pray as they shoot. And they're hitting their targets a lot. So it's the combination of Jesus and bullets that stops crime. I think some of his theology might be a little off, but. And the PR bond strikes again and again and again and again. California man arrested 10 times in 31 days to uh, drove to police station in stolen car to pick up property, according to the cops. California man is in the running to be even more terrible than uh, Florida man. Florida man. Yeah. He changed his facial hair several times during that. Yeah. Ordeal. Also had some damage here. He got a bandaid on. There's, yeah, there's some interest. I love 
this is, I love looking at mug shots and seeing how they change over time. And we have a little bit of an art section this week and not even it's the same subject and it was not planned that way. These are two separate stories. I, I thought that you put them together nope. for symmetry. In fact, I saw this one second. Oh. Florida principal resigns after parents complain about Michelangelo statue. Because because he's got it out for Harambe. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the statue of David he's uh, nude. by Michelangelo, he's got the got the junk out. It's it's not. Uh, this is what happens when you tolerate idiocy. Yeah, this is. Which could be a headline for our second story. So the rule at that school is if you're going to introduce anything like, uh, you know, controversial, I guess this is the new DeSantis thing that's in effect. You have to give all parents, uh, I think, a two week notice and they have to sign off on it or they're allowed to pull their kids out of that. The thing about it is that's like pretty much all art, like they're going to have no art education. <laughs> Uh, this also was a private school, not a public school. And I don't know what age these kids were, but what do you think are the odds that private school students all have phones in their pocket? Very 100%. high. And how many of those have used that phone to look at something a little more <laughs> risque you know, than a statue of David? Uh, yeah. And then, but the statue of David was definitely part of this study. <laughs> the Journal of Urology is funding a study. Depictions of that in historical paintings reflect the changing perceptions of the ideal size of that. And so this is actually an academic paper you can go read, which is really actually kind of interesting. I think both Romans and Greeks said smaller was better. That's from what I understood. Right. Over time, uh, they have gotten progressively larger. Mm. And they took out any uh, art that displayed them as engorged. Mm. They had to be flaccid yeah. in order to be considered. So uh, over time, our artists have chosen to increase the size of that. There's probably some, I mean, people are bigger overall, right? Yeah. They're taller, certainly. I was watching some of those French riots, and I was like, look at these tiny little people. <laughs> Not only are they skinnier I mean, than us. Okay, we're really opening ourselves up here for like French people to be like, look how, look at these right. fat Americans. Right. No, look, yeah. I get it. But it wasn't just weight. They're short too. Yeah. It's all the hormones in the meat. They are little tiny people. And uh, here's a, you know, we can start a, a nice debate in the chat and get that sweet engagement. Where do you stand? Solid or liquid? Ooh. Solid. I'm going to say liquid. Do the headline. Oh, TSA stirs debate after ruling peanut butter as a liquid. My mom would be furious. I would call, well, so I'm going on a backpacking trip here in a few weeks and I found a giant squeeze tube of peanut butter. And because of that, like it's because it comes out more like a liquid. They, that's probably the oil they add to it. Is it natural peanut butter? Yeah. Natural peanut butter will also separate. Yeah. And in that state it's definitely not a liquid. No. Is the oil, the liquid in a mixture? Can we the, say that? The food processed uh, peanut butter that I've had, where I made it myself, it was definitely not a liquid. It was more, like even get, getting it down to like puree, it was still just super thick and sticky. It's kind of one of the, or you know, the qualities that we expect of peanut butter. Right? Yeah, yeah. Peanut butter is fine. I mean, uh, you know, one of my mom's favorite snacks is basically just a loaf of bread and peanut butter. I don't think that's a... A really healthy snack. No. Let's say that. No. It's got great calories, though. Like, when you're hiking over mountains, peanut butter, great. But when you're basically, uh, you know, just like homebound 24-7. Yeah. Making the cat bite you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Krista, uh, you have, for a long time now, been trying to resist the purchase of chickens. Where do you stand on that? I like the idea of chickens. I don't know if I want the maintenance of chickens. Well, maybe you should consider that they are bioterrorism. Mm. <laughs> FDA clears lab-grown chicken as safe to eat. Not for me. <laughs> uh, I know, like everyone doesn't watch every week, but I love it when we get a comment. It's like, Wendell, you look great. Are you yeah. on a diet plan? And it's like, well, oh, man, not you're, exactly. You're, you're I, I really can, killing it. I can no longer process animal protein. Uh, so I mean, you are on a diet, but not necessarily like a voluntary one. I like how as soon as you know, like. You're reminded of that horror. You start the autistic, <laughs> yeah. the coping. I mean, let's let's. I'm also, you know, I'm also doing the cardio and the exercise, and all that's going well too. Because I figure, you know, why not embrace the darkness? But 
Yep, no animal proteins for a while. An unknown why. Yeah. Send, oh, you know what? Stupid liver. All the orange soda people, you should send exciting non-animal protein, non-animal fat snacks. Vegan snacks. Oh, yeah. That'd probably be fun. We should have done that for Christmas. We did the exotic fruit tasting for Christmas. But I don't know where look. to source that. Uh, some of the bigger grocery stores have but like vegan sections. Also, one thing we've talked about and try to avoid is that, and Wendell's experienced this, is most food that's marketed to vegans is just processed it's, it's trash. Yeah. It's not great. Aldi, a lot of the Aldi stuff is like, oh, this is really good stuff. It's not. It's really bad. Aldi has um meatballs, which are the least bad and most meaty tasting. But honestly, it's gotten to the point where like a three lentil chili that doesn't even have any fake meat in it tastes to me like I remember meat chili. That's one of the most satisfying things I can eat. That's like mm. if I eat something that's vegetarian, I prefer something that is like confident in itself to just call itself vegetarian and not trying to just be meat. It's a three bean chili and it is it is incredible. The fact that you remember that as being the same now is a good indicator that the disease is destroying your memory. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, taste, everything tastes different and it's very off-putting when you eat something and the taste doesn't go with the smell. Well, that has nothing to do with Amazon drivers, but you know what? I bet Amazon drivers, in order to keep their calories up and their busy work day, they probably snack on some peanut butter. Right? Yeah. That'd be a good thing to do. And they also have become, I think, pretty um, calloused and jaded and they don't care as long as just like, I have to deliver these packages. Nothing will stop me from doing that. Amazon driver seen delivering package during reported armed police standoff because there's not an exception in the Amazon software to be like, ah, armed police standoff. I'm not going to be able to deliver today. Do you think Bezos saw this headline and he was like, good job, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then like one of his assistants heard him like talking about the story and he's like, should we send him a raise? He's like, oh, uh, no. Not not Bezos, Jassy. Jassy mm. saw this and was like, yeah, our software is, is, is good. So this guy, they were literally like surrounding the home. He didn't care. He just pulled up. He got his package and started walking. It was the house that the guy was yeah. in. And the police rushed up and they were like, what are you doing? And he's like, I got this package. So they took it from him. And he was like, okay. But he still took the picture. <laughs> to Delivered make- to someone at the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Kafka-esque future we have created for ourselves. Right there. That. That is what we have to... AI, are you paying attention? These kinds of exceptions are why. Because that guy would lose his job if he didn't do that. Uh, By doing that, he gets a fun headline and everybody's like, wow, he's really dedicated. But if he hadn't done that, he would have suffered in some way. Now, I didn't realize that this was a new word that we're not allowed to say. (laughs) But I'll add it to the list. Mississippi TV News anchor Barbie Bassett taken off the air after quoting Snoop Dogg during broadcast. I thought it was fine and it was in context. That's not the first time she's done that. And they maybe asked her not to do that. And she was just like, I'm going to embrace it. She's been there 22 years. So we won't say it. Do you you guys know the concept of Carney? No. No. So Carney is like back in the day of carnivals, right? They wanted to talk in front of the country rubes while they were stealing from them. So they started to put the is sound into words and mix up. It's kind of like pig Latin. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what Snoop does. So she did one of his words and she put the is on a word that you are not allowed to say. (laughs) But then it's not that word anymore. But she was still punished for that. I think that only Snoop Dogg can say if what she did was wrong or not. Some sort of appropriation. (laughs) I think he'd be cool with it. I think so too. That's why. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he would look at that and be like, no, in this context, what she did is completely fine. I Although think Snoop is such a businessman that he'd be like, any press is good press. I, I don't want to like fall on the woke side of anything, but I will say like, it's probably not up for us to decide if Snoop Dogg is the spokesperson for a race. So, well, I mean, if, 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 if a bunch of the times in our group chat and sometimes on the forum, you know, the meme where the dude's bringing pizza to everybody and he opens the door and there's it's from rooms community. on fire. Yeah, and it's Troy and, he has, and he's just like. <gasps> yeah, and it's like, I read this story and the first thing, I don't know why, but the first thing that popped into my, my head was like, should I not post that anymore? Because that dude's a black dude. Is that a thing? Am I doing something wrong? Which is exactly what they want. Which, Always I, don't, being, I still don't know what we're talking about at this point. When we doubt everything we say and everything we do because we're terrified. <laughs> Am I not allowed to post that meme? It's a good meme. It's funny. I mean, I can't I don't tell know. you that it's okay. I mean, it is okay. I know it's okay, but I can't tell you the society won't backlash you hard for it. What about the ain't, got, ain't nobody got time for that lady? Because 
that's also hilarious. I, 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 that lady's a vibe. She's my spirit animal. Is that the first time you've ever used vibe? No, I don't know. Well, uh, you know, it, speech is heavily controlled. You have to be really careful what you say these days because it can have crazy outcomes. And that is nowhere is that worse than in the education system. So these students apparently have learned and they're finding new and exciting ways to carry out their threats. Uh, Frederick County Middle Schooler charged. He threatened his classmates on a PowerPoint presentation. That also is a vibe sometimes when you're giving a presentation to a client that just can't get their head out of their butt. They didn't say exactly what was said here. I don't know how overt this threat was. Maybe it was just like the animations, like the clip art came in and it hit something else in the other clip art. And it was like, ooh, that seems threatening. What if the PowerPoint was just a vibe? It's like, oh, this is a threatening vibe. It's like, well, crap. The vibes are off, bro. I think you got praised for using that word. And I <laughs> to it too desperately. You gotta, you gotta turn it down. Otherwise, then no, we don't actually use TikTok. And uh, like I said, the education system is uh, the epicenter for this horrible new Orwellian nightmare. And the colleges are really, really leaning into it. To help students adapt, some colleges are eliminating grades. Why don't they just skip all this? And it's like, give us money and we'll give you a degree. And why give them the money? <laughs> what are they measuring? No, no, the colleges, they have to have the money. I think we could live without this. <laughs> there was a joke in Arrested Development about this where like, uh, maybe went to a school where they it was a new age school and they didn't have grades. She got a fish in spelling. <laughs> it was, it was like Ten years ago. Like How do you think the Amazon HR hiring department would respond to that when they were a looking fish? to decide well, who to lay off? Yeah. And here we have an example of uh, an amazing new technology, but no one really asked. Like, is no this one better? Asked for this. Is this better than the original thing that we had? <laughs> These liquid trees full of microalgae can be used to make solar panels. And unlike real trees that will die when exposed to the pollution of a city, these will thrive. Now, I don't understand. It looks like this is a sealed environment, but they say it pulls pollution out of the air. So it has to have oxygen or air getting through there, right? So I saw this originally on Twitter and then found the news article. So I think this is probably someone looking to get startup capital. Um. And we've been baited, but what a... <laughs> What a stupid thing, and it deserves to be a nonsense. Can, now, we, can we just plant a tree instead? Seems like that would be cheaper and more a, effective. That's a repeated thing that whenever it's like, we found a new thing to like replace pollinators, a new thing to replace trees. It's like, why not just use, just plant what we already have? Pro tip to whoever's trying to get this started. Forget all the nonsense. You don't have a great product. It's better than trees, but you can still succeed. You need to go to Disney, and you need to brand that as the Star Wars back to tank. <laughs> And I guarantee Florida will have one on every street corner. Multi-million dollar idea right there. I'll take my commission payment with the cashier's check, please. <laughs> and we got another Guardian story. Oh, well, this is the artificial meatball. Oh, yeah. I've seen this everywhere this week. Well, they claim it's not artificial. They say this is the real thing. <laughs> meatball from a woolly mammoth? What? Well, we've got woolly mammoth DNA. We can grow woolly mammoth meat. This is a meatball made from lab-grown woolly mammoth meat. What if it tastes terrible? They didn't say how it tasted. I was very disappointed in the coverage here. <laughs> they want you to order your own case of mammoth meat. They're not going to oh. sell the mammoth meat, but they are going to sell other kinds of fake meats. This is a marketing stunt that we all fell for again. <laughs> oh, so many Guardian stories. Uh, the UK has switched up some laws. They are now allowing genetic modification of animals. And the idea is basically sent to cow, right? Right. They want to make farm animals more juicy and delicious, more yielding and so forth. But they didn't add any rules about what kind of animals. Uh, it turns out pets could also be included in that. So pet owners could genetically modify their pets without any kind of issue, which seems reasonable. I mean, if you can modify a cow to, okay. We're, you know what we're going to get? We're going to get like rat sized dogs. <laughs> I, that are horribly messed up in the mind i actually went somewhere else there was uh, i don't know if it's i remember reading something many years ago and it was probably nonsense but it said that that uh, cats probably were intelligent enough and uh, cats and dogs were were probably intelligent enough for some level of speech but they lacked the muscle groups and you know vocal cord complexity and all that other kind of stuff to do it somebody's gonna splice that in within our lifetime we're gonna have cats and dogs that can talk or can be more vocally emotive than they are 
I don't know. Cricket's pretty vocally. Yeah, my cats, <laughs> no, bad. my cats make a lot of noise. Well, no, yeah. it, wouldn't it be more entertaining if it was speech? It no, was like, no, food, no it, food, 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 you know, food. A lot of people you see post online, they'll be like, oh, the cat's so vocal. I love that. Yeah, it's fun for about a month. Yeah. <laughs> but like around, around like six o'clock, Cricket knows it's getting close to feeding time yeah. and he just starts that wailing. Wow. Over and over and over. For this like an story hour. is also a vibe that I can relate to. This is, uh, I mean, you kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, oh. like, there's nothing bad happening here. He's, yeah. you know, just doing his thing. Missouri Eagle waits for a rock to hatch instead of an egg. Because, like, normally they mate for life. And so the male and the female eagle, like, take turns incubating the egg. This male eagle is confused and is incubating an egg. And the, the wildlife preservationists say, this happens sometimes. Don't worry about it. Once the hormones calm down after mating season, he'll go back to normal, realize it's an egg, and be fine. They also talk about how eagles, because sometimes eggs don't hatch, you know, the thing dies inside of there. And they said that when that happens, they didn't detect any, like, sadness from it. It was just like, all right, that was a failure. On to the next one. But one of their things that they do is they turn the eggs over every couple of hours, and he is very, very serious about turning his rock. Oh. <laughs> Nice. I found a, I was out working in the yard last night and I found a little bird nest. I guess the, the birds were gone, but there was a, a nest on the floor, on the, the ground. The, the state guy is very concerned about all the pigeons that are, that are nesting. He's been, uh, he's been patrolling the area, clearing out all the nests. A hot new bird flew. Yeah. That'd be a good segue for, I think we have a story about the, that. The but. state is very concerned about whatever bird disease is going on. Cause yeah. they're, that guy's spending a lot of time working on that. Yeah, might be a good idea to minimize your animal contact. At wild animals. I don't know if you'd refer to these as wild animals. They're farm animals. Farm I guess animal, not. Yeah. But uh, is it okay to snuggle them, even if they don't consent? <laughs> no more goat snuggles. Local family farmers pull out of events due to backlash. It's probably just a few Cairns. Let's they were it. they were charging five dollars a snuggle. Yeah. Well, I mean. It's like petting zoos are the same way. They're yeah. usually like five bucks, and the kids can go through. And yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure the goats probably liked it. I don't know. Baby goats, Maybe. snuggles, it's probably fine. My cats would be okay with it, but they would not be okay with it from strangers. Mm. Yeah. They would not like that at all. There's a long trust building process that would have to take place there. We had goats growing up, and I remember that they would let you know if they didn't want to be bothered anymore, even the real small ones. The goats are mean. I yeah. saw... Unless they get bigger, especially. I was driving around the other day, I saw a bumper sticker, and it was, my kids are buttheads with a little picture of a goat. Uh. <laughs> Because <laughs> the name of baby goats are kids. Uh, I feel like people who have joke. goats are really, really into having goats. Like, if someone has a goat, they'll tell you. I mean, if I had to mow the side of a, a hill that was filled with all kinds of things that wasn't grass and it was just a pain in the ass and the, the, the dirt was uneven from all the rainfall and stuff, and a goat would totally take care of that for me, yeah. and I just had to, like, give it a couple cans of food every now and then, I would be very... I would be very appreciative of said goat. A lot of times goats are used for invasives control as well. Like they'll just let them eat through an area oh, yeah. and then take them out. Goats eating kudzu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once again, we have an Indian story that I, sometimes I wonder if these are fake or <laughs> something's not coming through in the translation. Cause they are just crazy. Man convicted of 2014 murder with parrot's testimony gets life in jail. Well, the parrot set the police off on a chain of investigation which may or may not have been shoddy police work. The, the article makes it sound like it was good police work, but the parrot was like, this person did it. And then the police started looking into it. And it's like, oh yeah, there is some evidence that person did it. Now the guy confessed, but he had an accomplice. The, the confession could have been wrung out of him. And mm. some, uh, seems like the family like wasn't surprised at all about it. It was kind of like a, a kid that no one liked or whatever. Mm. But, two, uh, two people collaborated and on the murder apparently. And so the, the claim is the husband came home, found the wife and the dog dead. And then later on, like not immediately, he was, uh, he mentioned the name in the bird's earshot and the bird went crazy and oh. started naming this murderer who was in the family. Like the bird knew the guy. <laughs> the bird knew the guy. They were friends. They would get pizza sometimes. Not friends anymore. And if you're thinking, you, it's like, oh my God, I need to run out and get a security parrot. Hold on. China reports human case of H3N8. This is flu. this is a new strain. This isn't the H5N1. This is a hot new one for spring. I would never be caught dead in H5N1. That's uh, not good. I'm trying to think like 
when this becomes the next thing and they unleash AI to control us, like what darkness is that? Probably shouldn't have ended on that one. Huh? Yeah, this is kind of a heavy one. We should have kept this one further. <laughs> I put up. the animal section last, but then we had the darkness at the darkness. very end. Yeah. Just don't think about it. So bad. So far, they I, like. I think it is transmitting between mammals, right? I saw a story about that, but it, I don't think it's really done human to human yet. So. Maybe we do need the fake chicken meat. Mm. Anyway, that's it. We'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out.